10 Sadistic and Horrifying Villains from the Spawn Universe Backstories Explained One of the most underrated of Rogue's Gallery While it is true that Todd McFarlane did enjoy the superstar status with his epical work on Spider-Man, it was actually Spawn that garnered him praise and position amongst the sea of comic fans. The character of Spawn, which was created in the 1990s, began appearing in the monthly comic book of the same name for Image Comics and very briskly gathered a significant craze. From generating a flourishing gamut of immensely detailed action figures to an out of the ordinary critically praised animation series, Spawn has come a long way. The character of Spawn happens to be a highly capable CIA assassin who gets killed in a mission and is sent to hell. There he makes a deal with the devil and becomes his hell spawn. Speaking of the superhero ranking, the representation of Spawn has always been a matter of discussion. We know that he is not a member of the DC or the Marvel family, which in turn leads him to fade away at times. But no matter what, this character has retained his place till this day, with his world being one of the most fascinating of all comic creations. Today's video will talk about 10 of the most sadistic and horrifying villains from the Spawn universe with their backstories explained. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Okay, what about creamsicles? Hell has many demons in training. This one? is known as Billy Kincaid. Billy Kincaid. Who doesn't remember Billy Kincaid reciting the song, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Well, Kincaid happens to be the senator's son who was always protected by his regretful father and Jason Wynn. We will talk more about Jason in later points, but he is way more famous for being a deranged, murderous pedophile and a recurring villain in the Spawn comic book series. First introduced in the fifth issue of the book as just released from a mental institution, Billy was suspected of murdering several children and accused of the disappearance and brutal murder of the governor's eight-year-old daughter. Once discharged from the psychic hospital, he was up to his old tricks of kidnapping and killing children using his ice cream truck. In his earlier life as the CIA assassin, Al Simmons, Spawn was signed up for killing Kincaid, but could not do so as the latter was arrested before he could carry out his mission. So it goes without saying, the felicitous, horrifying death Spawn happens to give Kincaid when he resumes his old habit. Stabbing Kincaid with an ice cream scooper along with some popsicle sticks and hanging his bloodstained cadaver in the office of Detective Sam Burke and Twitch Williams was quite a sight. Let's not forget the interesting note pinned to his torso which read, Boys screamed and girls screamed, so I made him scream and scream and scream. The fictitious character of Billy Kincaid keeps appearing as the supervillain battling against Spawn. When Kincaid wakes up in hell, he chances upon Vindicator, one of the five Phlebiac brothers, and Malibolja, the ruler of the eighth Spear of Hell, and soon becomes a hell spawn in the latter's service. Spawn fights the newly empowered Kincaid effortlessly, defeating him and severing his head. But that's not all. Kincaid comes back again as a ghost possessing people and literally forcing them into acting out their most aggressive urges. With each murder, Kincaid not only condemns the souls of the people he compelled into committing the crimes, but also grows more powerful than before. Initially, it becomes just impossible for Spawn, along with Sam, Twitch, and his mentor Cogliostro, to stop Kincaid because of his body jumping powers. But soon enough, Spawn leads him to possess a police officer and tricks him into the dead zone. Both the Hell Spawns, now depowered, find each other hand to hand with Twitch firing a single shot into the cop's forehead, killing him and Kincaid at the same time. Watch out for Billy Kincaid, who inevitably happens to be one of the most interesting and underrated villains from the Spawn universe. The Violator 
This supervillain by Todd McFarlane simply needs no introduction. The Violator is unquestionably the most recurring villain of the comic book series and also spawns Arc Nemesis, who was first sent to Earth as the demonic guardian to spawn. The eldest and most powerful of the five demonic brothers known as the Flabiac Brothers, Violator's primary intent is to chaperone Hellspawns into executing Malibulge's wish of raising an army for Hell. Violator considers humanity weak and affirms that demons should lead the armies of Hell. That's exactly the kind of talk we don't tolerate around here, right Buzz? Enough. Being an intermediary demon within Hell's ranking, the Violator boasts of appreciable strength and recovery to injuries. He is definitely not any demon to be taken easily. It's quite easy for him to rip out a Hellspawn's heart with just one hand, pulled through a myriad of high caliber gunshots that would otherwise immediately kill a human being. Shown to literally breathe flames, the Violator can only be annihilated by someone who is an equal or of higher power, such as a Hellspawn or Heavenly Weapons. He is also capable of shape-changing, often taking the guise of a clown to walk amongst the humans. The clown is 3 feet 10 inches, has 4 fingers in each hand, very ugly to look at, obese, bald, and has this blue paint on his face in the shape of an M. Mm, tastes like chicken. <laughs> the shape-shifting powers of the Violator make him capable of taking any appearance that he likes, but he mostly sticks to this form as he sees humans as disgusting as his own clown form. The character of Violator has been killed numerous times only to be returned to Hell, even more powerful, and reanimated by his master. One might wonder how Todd McFarlane came up with such an interesting name. It so happened on a cold, rainy night while McFarlane was waiting for his wife inside his car when he saw a sign posted on a wall which said, No parking any time, all Violators will be towed. That's when he realized how funky and yet nasty Violator would make as a villain name. Goes without saying, the Violator is truly one of the most horrifying villains from the Spawn universe. If you won't lead my army, then you must die. This fictional supervillain appears as the main antagonist and the ruler of the 8th sphere of Hell. Malabolja has been around for 70,000 years and is the one to have created Spawn and all the other Hell Spawn before him to assemble an army that's capable of destroying Heaven. It is revealed that his character has continuously been at war with the rulers of the other spheres of Hell, and he happens to be in constant conflicts with Memon, the second primary antagonist in the comic book series. The character of Malibolja was the construction of the preceding leader of the eighth sphere of Hell called Leviathan. Needless to say that Malibolja turned out to be too powerful, ultimately killing his creator and taking over the eighth sphere as the new ruler. Todd McFarlane's Malibolja is supremely feared and also hailed as the actual Grand Master of Hell. His powers boast of necro energies such as raising the dead, super strength, dimensional manipulation, recovering skills, and the power to morph and influence illusions. His expertise in necroplasm gives him the elite power to create hell spawns, and during his rule, he manages to generate an army that is larger and way stronger than anything Heaven or he himself could tackle. But despite his significant role and recurrent appearances in the comic book, it's ironic how Malibolja does not appear in the Spawn television series. Though his name is mentioned and his influence is apparent, one only gets to see a glimpse of his face and den in the fourth episode. Urizen. The character of Urizen happens to be one of the missing threads in the cosmos who administered along with the other elder gods bringing together equilibrium to the world. Urizen, having been there even before heaven and hell were formed, had the solitary duty of devouring souls, setting them free from the circle of life and death, and prolonging dispute as a means of purifying the universe. This agitated factions of both heaven and hell as they needed souls to elevate the hierarchy. 
So they paired together, perhaps for the first time, and defeated Urizen, banishing him. That was also the only thing that could have been done to him since he was an immortal. But a cult that dedicated themselves to Urizen initiated to channel his power and engender his return. The cult felt there was a deficit of a harmonized force between hell and heaven and that it would be Urizen who would rise to fill the gap. A course of ceremony started with 13 souls and during each full moon, one member of the group was elected as a sacrifice who would be chased by the group, butchered and then consumed as a part of a cannibalistic sacrament. This act of consuming the sacrifice was presumed to blend their souls and the intent was to continue till only one soul remained and that would be the vessel through which Urizen would come back. However, the sacrificial ceremony was hindered when Spawn discovered that and modified the process using his magic. So when the cult members ate their friend, they began to throw up their own body parts, insects and bile, eventually leading to the death of the remaining and also ending the threat in the process. But what Spawn was not aware of was someone else had a backup plan for the Dark God. Two minor gate opener demons carried out this sacrificial ceremony and completed the opening spell which liberated Urizen from his exile, letting him return through the smoke. The fact that Urizen is a supreme deity grants him a lot of powers. The more he consumes souls, the bigger and stronger he becomes. He has the potential to radiate animosity in the human minds and let go off their inhibitions that further led them to commit dreadful things. His talent of vanishing into a cloud of smoke and appearing in the same fashion is extremely noteworthy. Redeemer The Redeemer who is also known as the Anti-Spawn is the holy opposite to the Hellspawn. Every once in a while, the Heavenly Masters look for the assistance of the Star Hive to produce righteous warriors who are the loyal soldiers of God. The Star Chamber opt for human beings who are deserving enough to be the hosts of the Redeemer and modify them into celestial fighters with elemental fire to fight the forces of darkness. The Redeemers possess no awareness of their prior life as the Redeemer and they also have no understanding of them becoming the Redeemer upon coming back to the human world. Like their demonic peers, the Redeemers bear the same infinite fury inside their souls, but then again, the source of their anger is that of light and not darkness. The Redeemer possesses the power of teleportation by turning his body into blue energy. There have been three hosts of the Redeemer. Jason Wynn happens to be the first host, who is atomically transformed and rebuilt with the fire in his soul. The fire boosted him with all the powers that Spawn possessed, along with an unstoppable, agonizing and unsatisfied urge to defeat Spawn. The second redeemer happens to be Phil Temper, an ex-criminal having found faith in religion while he was serving his sentence. He went through a similar process, but unlike Wynn, his soul was redeemed with regret. The third in the existing host happens to be Eddie Frank, a young boy who had not had a pleasant life. Blaming Spawn for his situation and later while attempting to kill himself, Eddie becomes the third and also the current redeemer who is way more overpowering than his predecessors. The sole exception with Frank is the fact that he preserved all memories of his past life prior to becoming the redeemer. The Freak Brian, also addressed as the Freak, is an absconder from a mental asylum with split personalities. He is a maniac whose derangement and dementia were effects of his ex-wife telling him that she did not want to have kids. After escaping from the asylum, the Freak settled down in the sewers. He encountered Spawn after he got knocked out in the gutters of New York City. The Freak invented his own story telling Spawn how his family was killed by Dr. Delirium. When he sought vengeance on the doctor, he was crippled by the guards of delirium and made to go through several experiments, but he was lucky enough to escape. Spawn, after hearing his story, decides to help him in getting his revenge and that's precisely how the freak steered Spawn through his payback plot. He fulfilled his desire of killing the doctor by throwing him out of the window. While all of this was happening, Brian's wife was called in at the Federal Health Services Department as her husband Brian, aka The Freak, was on the loose again. While being taken over by Malibolgia, The Freak had a variety of demonic abilities on display. He possessed immortality, superhuman speed and strength, teleportation, sharpened claws, the ability to absorb energy and take physical and mental control over another living being. 
the character of Freak truly happens to be one of the most sadistic and gruesome villains from the Spawn universe. Jessica Priest Besides being a deranged and barbaric woman, Jessica Priest also happens to be a schizophrenic murderer with a split personality who simply enjoys to kill. A fantastic sharpshooter, martial artist, and a supremely schooled spy with exceptional strategic analysis skills, Jessica has given demonstration of superhuman abilities in more than one occasion. She is able to unknowingly forecast events before they take place. This specific talent permits her to literally dodge shots on the combat zones. The fictional character from the Spawn universe serves as a replacement for Chapel, as Jason Wynn's best assassin in the 1997 film adaption of Spawn, and happens to be the one responsible for physically killing off Al Simmons. Priest was never what one would call a balanced person. Jessica was only five years old when she grew intrigued watching marshmallows get roasted on fire. Who knew that she would literally take that as an inspiration, take out the lighter fluid, pour it on her sleeping parents, and set them along with the entire house on fire. And during years of shock therapy, she was deemed sane and released from the mental health services. But Priest soon proved that she was far away from being healed, and her actions led her to being arrested and locked up in some remote prison, never to see light again. That's when, after a few years, Priest was contacted by Jason Wynn, who offered her a deal that she just couldn't refuse. The Curse this supervillain is a filthy rich person and a spiritual maniac who is on the lookout for a place in the heavens and happens to know a lot about the war between heaven and hell than most people. Born as Philip Cron, he has been gearing himself up his entire life to get to heaven and all he looks for is an opportunity to lead the armies of heaven against the armies of hell. He went to the extent of purposely going blind and disfiguring his own face in the process. That's not all, he even got rid of his right arm to show how faithful he was to God. But when his prayers were not responded to, he went on to become extremely rich, educated himself about the occult, and even used technology to rebuild his arm. While the curse was studying the occult, he was learning of ways to gain access into heaven, and that's where he got to know about Spawn. Initially regarding him as an angelic warrior, he tried to kill him and gain his powers. But Spawn beat him up fatally, destroying his new arm in the process, and left him crucified on a wall in the Rat City to warn his enemies to stay away. The curse was later found by the demon hunter John Sansker, who tortured him further, but he managed to escape, finding his way back to the mansion, and began scheming his revenge against Spawn. He started building his own computer-generated minions by mixing human and demon flesh and blending them with cybernetic parts to enhance the effects. Later, he sent them to Spawn's throne, laying just the perfect trap for him, but all of that eventually led to Spawn defeating the curse yet again. Finally realizing that his place in heaven was always refuted to him because of his failed attempts in destroying Spawn, the curse sought to gain every bit of knowledge about hell so that he could defeat Malibolja and recreate hell as his own territory. The Satan Both God and Satan happen to be children of the creator of the universe and all its worlds. The latter, however, made its way to becoming the supreme leader of hell. While many did believe Malibolja to be the devil in the Spawn universe, it was always Satan, the Prince of Darkness. With Satan being the ultimate monarch of Hell, every other lord that includes Malibolja and even Maman were to answer to his will. While it is true during Satan's absence it was Malibolja who served as the Grand Master of Hell, generating a colossal army of Hellspawn for destroying Heaven, it has always been Satan who is feared by every other demon residing in Hell. The only one who is equivalent to Satan happens to be the Omega Spawn. The character of Satan was introduced in the 158th issue of the Spawn comic series. He is shown behind the newly empowered Katie Fitzgerald as a giant humanoid with horns and a forked tail. Satan boasts of a lot of powers and abilities. He is nigh omnipotent, which means that he possesses the ability to nearly do anything. The fact that he is immortal, invulnerable, with superhuman strength, and his ability to know everything just makes him one of the most horrifying villains from the Spawn universe. 
You are the dead man. Jason Wynn. This fictional supervillain happens to be the director of the United States Security Group, an umbrella corporation encircling the CIA, National Security Council, and the National Security Agency. Be at my command. Anyone who refuses to join my consortium won't be around to argue. <laughs> One of the most influential men in the world, Wynn is a ruthless, corrupt, merciless, and even responsible for giving the order to kill Al Simmons in the first place. While Jason was on the lookout for power, it was him who had employed the deranged child killer, Billy Kincaid, to kidnap and kill the governor's daughter. While it's true Alice Simmons was hired to get rid of Kincaid, the latter was already arrested before he could finish his job. But it was Jason who had used his influential power to shorten Kincaid's prison time and get him to serve only five years. Jason's insatiable greed only got the best of him when Malibolgia handed over Psychoplasm, the supernatural substance containing profound powers in exchange for his best soldier, Al Simmons. When he received the very essence of what hell is made of, the Psychoplasm reacted and bonded with Al Simmons' memories, creating Simmonsville. Jason, as the first Redeemer, attacked Spawn while he was in Simmonsville and was almost successful in beating Spawn to death had the latter not teleported. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.